Hey, what's up everybody? This is Oscar 501 and today I want to do a video on something a little bit different in a game that I'm getting more and more excited for. And that is this right here and it's called Atlas. Now this game is being made by the same development team that made Ark Survival Evolved. And if you don't know what that is, that is a like hardcore survival game that was decently popular. Um, it did just come out with new content so it's more popular now, but over time I think it's been dying. Um, pretty consistently. Now, as you can see right here, I have 3,800 hours in that game, and I haven't played it a ton this past year or a little bit longer than that, and that is because after the game came out of Early Access, which that game is in Early Access as well, this game will be in it too, um, once it got full released, they basically stopped fixing the game. They were still adding content, but it seemed like they just stopped fixing the major issues with the game. And I played that game since the launch. And at the launch it had incredibly bad performance. Some of the worst performance on any like game that was released to the public even though it was early access. Um, like top of the line 1080 Ti PCs with top processors everything like that. Couldn't run this game even decently but they were doing updates like consistently like multiple a day that actually had noticeable changes on performance bugs um, just basically balance across the game but after that after it came out in a full release the game kind of just fell off because they weren't fixing anything anymore and this game is by the same people and because of that because of the end life of Ark Survival Evolved I was a lot less excited for this even when I saw the trailer even though the trailer looks pretty cool but the more and more I kind of watch stuff on this and you know look at the trailer and read more about it it seem I'm getting more and more excited about it even though it will be in early access and it might be extremely um, like unoptimized even though I have a better PC now it might have super bad servers anything like that but I think I'm probably still going to get this game more and more I think about it. So basically this game, I'm just going to read to you what it has on Steam. Now this game comes out in five days for early access. So I don't know if there's a price anywhere. I'll still have to look some up about it and see if there's some random interview where a dev says the price. But basically I'm just going to go through overall what this game is. So basically this is an MMO game and if you ever played Ark Survival Evolved it does look quite a bit like it. Just it looks more like a full flushed out game from the gameplay and stuff. So basically about this game from the creators of Ark Survival Evolved comes Atlas. A massively multiplayer first and third person fantasy pirate adventure. Now this next part is kind of why I'm a bit more excited than I was. Atlas will host up to 40,000 players exploring the same globe simultaneously. So that is basically, I think it says somewhere else, um, maybe under one of the trailer descriptions or something, that that, that pretty much means 40,000 people on one server. And somewhere, I don't know if it's a dev interview or something like that they say it is 12 times 100 or 1200 times bigger than Ark Survival Evolve's base map I'm pretty sure and Ark Survival Evolve's base map is not small by any measure really I mean it's it's a little bit smaller probably than the size of like say a Fallout 4 or something like that but it's not a ton smaller so it's definitely the size of some de decently sized open world games. And this is going to be 1200 times bigger. Now the sounding of this sounds like it's going to be one of the biggest in overall landmass. We don't know how like barren this stuff will be. But overall landmass it sounds like it's going to be one of the biggest games to ever be released. Especially in the newer generation. So let's go on with reading the about this game basically. Um, with an un unprecedented scale of cooperation and conflict. Stake your claim in this endless open world as you conquer territory, construct ships, search for buried treasure, assemble forts. Um, from some of the gameplay and stuff, it looks like the building, like building pieces are the same exact ones from Ark. So most likely the building system will be pretty close to Ark's, hopefully with some improvements. Plunder settlements and hire crew to join your powerful growing armada. Start small, then expand 
Your spheres have influence from a small island up to an unstoppable pirate empire that spans across the oceans. Wage battle against enemy fleets as you single-handedly can command large ships of war using the captaining and cist cap system. It's actually a weird word. Or divide up the responsibilities among your trusted lieutenants. So basically what this is sounding like is there are going to be NPCs in this game and you can have ships controlled by NPCs. Or giving the responsibilities to your trusted lieutenants most likely sounds like that's going to be other players. Because I think it does say somewhere, we'll keep reading, but I think it does say somewhere that there's going to be like a tribe system, which is basically an arc. So basically a clan or a guild system, something like that. Or take control of any weapon directly with your own character. Dive deep into the briny water to explore permanent sunken wrecks and recover salvage. Unearth the loot from procedurally, procedurally generated treasure maps and challenge zones. Or complete challenging main quest lines. Which is nice, there are quest lines. Ark had none of that. This is much more sounding like and seems to be built much more like a more traditional MMO. Which they are saying it is an MMO as well. Now where did I just leave off? Or complete challenging main quest lines, team up with other aspiring adventurers and sail into the vast ocean to discover new lands rich with region specific elements, tame exotic natural and mythic creatures. So there will be taming in it, which is also pretty cool because Ark did have taming. Hopefully there'll be some better taming methods, maybe more like upgraded versions of the newer ones they've added into the game. Tame exotic and nat natural and myth mythical creatures, raid forgotten tombs, confront powerful ancient gods, and even build and administer build and administer your own colonies, cities, and civilizations to dominate the atlas in your ultimate quest for fortune and glory. Now, a lot of this sounds cool. Now, this is a paragraph from the developers, so it's going to sound super amazing for pretty much any game. But even the gameplay and stuff looks really good. Um, it seems more functional than even like arc trailers and stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping that the game is a lot more functional overall, a lot less, you know, glitchy and kind of weird with a bunch of the stuff that was in arc. Then we're going to go down to more MMO on the grandest scale, physically sail in real time across the vast oceans with the pro proprietary server net with her technology explorers will voyage to over 700 unique landmasses across 4,500 square kilometers with thousands of discovery zones and 10 district world regions, each having their own unique resources, creatures, secrets, and environmental hazards. This is separately PVE Atlas for players. Oh, there is separately PVE Atlas for players who don't wish to play any PVP, which makes sense. Ark had the same exact thing. They had PVP and PVE servers. I'm wondering if PvP is going to be 100% open. Most likely it will be just 100% open. Now something else about this, just how they're explaining it makes it seem very, very interesting. Kind of more like old school-ish MMOs that are much more like hardcore. So you have to go to this side of the world to get this resource you want or kill this m mob that has this type of skin or something like that. So that's super interesting to me construct the ship of your dreams plank by plank build dry docks and start with a dinghy rope boat basic raft tiny slope slope or nimble schooner i think this was maybe written out slightly by someone whose first language is english because there's a little bit of stuff in here that's kind of weird but anyways moving up moving on up to your own versatile brigantine some of these words i also have not seen or a Titanic alley capable of transporting hundreds of crew and extensive cargo. Name your ship in big bold letters. Paint and copy your own pirate flag and custom place all over the piece of your ship. Which is a really good feature from Ark that I'm glad they're bringing into this. Basically you could, you could paint your dinosaurs, you can paint your armor, you can paint each other. Um, you can make signs that you could, you could actually um, basically download like the templates from websites or friends or something. Save them. Um, upload different templates of different pictures and just tons of different stuff like that which is definitely cool that they're, that they're bringing that into this game as well that adds an amazing amount of custom abil customized ability can't talk today whatsoever but especially in an MMO where that stuff usually isn't as pronounced 
that'll definitely be something pretty cool. Um, paint and copy your own power flag and custom place all the pieces of your ship, which makes it sound like you're able to just make some really like crazy looking ships that make no sense. Our survival evolved had one of those character customizations. It wasn't super in depth, like maybe like Fallout 4 or something, but you can make your characters absolutely look like monsters. And people I played with did it every single time. Name your ship in big bold letters, or I'd read through that, with shales and wear, planks and gun ports. Every single structure piece has a physical weight and material to function exactly how you want, which is also also pretty cool. It sounds like there's gonna be like your ships are gonna be massively customizable down to exactly where everything is placed, exactly what materials you use, everything like that, which is pretty cool. Captain your crew. Recruit real players and AI crew from free ports or rescue seasoned crew from destroyed army of the damned shipwrecks to man distinct stations on your boat. Set sail and explore the Atlas with them to gain experience and level up their stats or gear, as well as leveling your ship. So that also just adds, this game seems like it's going to be extremely extensive on RPG features, I guess, MMO features, um, because you can level up the people, like the NPCs you get on your boat, you can level up your boat. So just tons of kind of end game or features in the game. Your crew are versatile, whether on land or ship, or even riding behind your animal companions and emplacements. They can man weapons of all kinds, cannons, swivel guns, siege engines, turrets, and even gigantic mortars. Many with dynamically swappable ammo types, including grape shot, chain shot, spike shot, liquid fire, and more. That's pretty cool as well. Instruct them to board enemy ships and help you conquer the seas. Keep their stomachs full and their pockets full of gold. Lest you want a mutiny on your hands. Okay, so honestly when I just read that, it made me think of like... Even though this probably isn't a super big system, is pets in World of Warcraft, or if you don't keep them fed, they'll run away. Which is kind of funny. Keep their stomachs full and their pockets full of gold, unless you want a mutant in your hands. Take on the captain's wheel or divide up the command responsibilities via lieutenant podiums to direct your ship's assignment, weapon, system, sails, and stations, including standing orders or manual group fire, or walk up to any station and take control yourself. Powered PvP to the limit. Everything is up for grabs, including player ships. Okay, you can steal ships. That's kind of crazy. Their crew, their pets, their forts, their land. Well, you could steal pets in this? That that would be kind of like stealing Thames in Ark. Their land and their booty. If you can get your hands on it, you can take it. A ship's permanent logbook tells the tale of their legendary travel, exploits, and, uh, exploits and ownership. So I'm wondering if you build a ship, if it's kind of like a piece that you would always be able to repair in some way so even if it got fully destroyed you'd be able to repair it and it would have a log so it, like say if someone makes one like ship and just builds up over time then someone takes it someone else takes it get destroyed rebuilt if that would be something possible that actually seems really cool even if it's not exactly like that what they're saying here seems pretty cool this game might not be for everybody because everything could be stolen it, pretty much exactly like a hardcore survival like Ark Survival Evolved was, which literally people could destroy 100% everything even if you're offline. I don't exactly know how offline island's gonna work in this game, but they could literally make it so you spawn naked and have literally nothing. No foundation, no walls, nothing. No loot, anything. Be a hero or the villain you were meant to be. MMO skill character progression system included a launch over 15 disciplines with over 300 skills and a vast unlockable tree new feat system allows for active and passive bindable character abilities okay so it is a legitimate mmo as well while new stat buff systems allow innumerable abstract statistics to be modified by skills items and armor and now everything has scalable stats including structures that can be progressively upgraded okay so that line probably some of those stuff should have probably been more at the top because that is basically where it tells you this is an actual MMO. A lot of those systems are like base in most MMOs. So this game, from how it's sounding, is going to have extremely extensive progression systems at the end game, which is super important for MMOs and just progression based games. It gives people stuff to do constantly, which is always good. This is who you are. Sense of character, visual customization enables an endless range of realistic and not so realistic characters 
with a <laughs> okay so I'm pretty sure that means that they are adding how you could customize characters in ARC probably expanded so basically in ARC you could literally make your guy have like the bottom of your stomach so basically your stomach not your chest so the bottom half of your torso or torso you could make it be extremely wide you could make your legs extremely small with like super big hands and legs and you could just look absolutely deformed even armor would look ridiculous on you I'm assuming that's what they're meaning which is honestly kind of funny and even if it's like that person looks like a mutant weird thing over there with gigantic forearms tiny hands and massive feet or something and a tiny head it's still amazing that or I guess really cool that they're letting you do that because character customization and just overall customization on how you play games is something that I think a lot of games nowadays are sorely missing and kind of just not expanding on near as much as they should be with a vast array of sliders morphs muscle tones and tweakable values okay yeah that exactly is what it is probably expanded you can even per pixel design your own permanent tattoos that's new and pretty cool and then draw war paint on top of that too um, which means you could probably be drawn on by other people again, which is hilarious. If someone exists in the real world, they should be creatable in Atlas. Best in class, dynamic, hair growth, and real-time aging systems allow you to get old and pass on your legacy or find a fountain of youth. That is very interesting. So they did have hair growth in Ark. It sounds like this Ark was just a testing pool for this now. So Ark did add a thing where the, like... If you were a new character, you wouldn't have any facial hair or hair on your head, really. It would all be... Sh if you had hair on your head, it was super short. And it would grow out the longer you actually played. Um, it didn't take that long to fully grow it out. And you could still cut it and actually get hair as a resource. And you could cut each other's hair into different... You could cut beards into, like, braided, hair braided, stuff like that. But having an agent system that you can get old pass on your legacy it sounds like you could die and then almost give like your progression to a new character maybe or find a fountain of youth which sounds like there's going to be it sounds like it's going to be two ways um how i take this is you could let your character get old and die and you'd make a new character um that would have like all of your st like stats and progression and everything or find a fountain of youth which is probably a resource or something in the game where you could if you like your character you could make them go back to like younger like teens or 20s or something and this adventure full quest and waypoint systems with sub quests and rewards for major goals or procedural treasure maps and challenge zones also ensure there's always something new to find over the horizon and test action tactile melee combat systems with, with blocks parries dodges character motion optional shields op optional shields stunning and strength varying strikes directional attacks and more for use in either first or third person perspectives fists swords maces blackjacks daggers and much more give you a tremendous option to pick the right weapon for the job meanwhile period peer, period period appropriate there are some typos in this period appropriate weaponry with skill based active reload systems including flintlock pistols muskets blunderbuss and more just make sure to keep your powder dry. So that sounds like you honestly have to keep your powder dry, and if it gets wet, it won't work. Pretty cool, actually. Claim what's yours, form a company, claim territory, and apply taxation and behavior rules to which you own. Okay, so you could claim a territory, possibly like cities, and then tax the NPCs and get money. I'm getting excited just reading about this. So if you guys don't know, I haven't read this. I wanted to do it for the video. I'm actually getting more excited reading all of the specific information. Um, okay. Taxation and behavior rules to that which you own. Yeah, some of this some of this almost sounds like old English a little bit. Be a benevolent governor, a feudal lord, or a ruthless dictator. Territory ownership is visualized on your dynamic zoomable world map with fog of war obscuring uncharted regions. And Shroud of War hiding enemy territories is out of sight range. Contest other governments' ownership of land, structures, or ships to expand your empire. The 
top large scale spheres of influence. That's still a really weird way to say that. On the official atlas are visualized in real time on the playatlas.com website. So I'm going to have to check that out. Design your own custom flag per pixel to apply to your claims to be famous or infamous. Creatures great and small. Okay, there is a lot more. This is going to be a long video. <clears throat> okay, um, creatures great and small. More than 50 creatures at launch. Varying for breedable, utilitarian farm animals, and shoulder mounted parrots and monkeys that offer unique buffs all the way to magical mermaids okay so the shoulder animals those were in arc they didn't really give you buffs but that makes sense that they have the technology to already do it all the way to magical merm mermaids <laughs> and gigantic sea monsters of legend i wonder if you can tame those huge things creature can be found in the logical regions but take skill and tactics to tame using okay so you can tame sea monsters using new mechanics while also gaining the most benefit of fertility from their natural biomes Ferry those temperamental creatures across the vast oceans in a virtual nose arc to trade in exotic locales. So you'll be able to trade tames as too. Trade tames too. Um, so what I talked about before, the new taming mechanics, hopefully, they say new taming mechanics, hopefully they're a bit more intuitive. So an arc, for like the first year or more, pretty much every single tame was either you tranked it with trank things, it would be asleep, You'd have to feed it narcotics or narcotic berries to keep it asleep and unconscious on the ground. And then you would give it whatever food it liked and it would eat that over time and then tame. And on official servers, because on unofficial servers you could raise how fast this was as much as you wanted. On official servers, some tames could take hours and hours and hours. Later on they did do some more like some better taming stuff that was more gameplay but still hopefully they keep going in the right track and going more intuitive stuff free ports to meet and greet level cap starter zones allow you to learn the ropes and meet new players in a safe space before you venture out in the great unknown where the wind of destiny takes you beyond that it's up to the gods that's actually pretty nice that there's level cap starter zones so basically there's a starter zone that you guys probably can't kill each other or mess with each other to just learn the game for a little bit and then when you leave that area it's just open open pvp if you're on a pvp server or open whatever build your empire overhaul building sys overhauled building systems include automatic foundation ele elevation adjustment so that wasn't an arc um foundation ele i'm not even gonna try to say it basically foundation adjustment to how like tall or going up or down to be able to place it more there wasn't that dynamic tiles type swapping. Okay, that was on some mods, not in the base game, where there would be, like, say if you placed a wall in some of the mods, um, you could go up to it and change it to a different looking thing. So say if it was glass, you could change your glass to be able to be seen from the outside in, the inside out, not be able to be seen through it at all. Different walls would look, like, completely different. Like, you could change a wall to look like stone, like grass, like grassy stone or something like that, mossy stone, stuff like that. Um, improved snap detection, very much needed, and previewing, also needed. Integrated plumbing systems, they didn't have that. Per pixel painting everything. Beast of burden, hardness attachments to field guns and carriages, and much more survival systems. Newly include, among other aspects, vitamins, benefits, and efficiencies with recipe and cooking skills and varying ingredient qualities. All sounds pretty cool. Honestly, this game seems to have a ridiculous amount of systems with kind of pretty deep intricacies. Powerful mod and server functionalities. And here we go. Want to build a World War II Spitfire? Or a Flying Fortress bomber with fully walkable interior and gun stations carrying troops loaded with machine guns and rocket launchers? How about a tank, an aircraft carrier to play at the Battle of Midway on an extensive scale? How about an Arcadian steampunk airship floating through a cloud world? These examples and much more are provided with the Atlas Dev Kit, where you can make efficient, where you can make efficiently create typo whatever large-scale MMO action game you want to see in the see happen. All supported by the database-driven network technology that powers Atlas. Unofficials, unofficial Atlas can be any size and configuration, while a visual map tool lets server hosts lay out their own complete custom world of islands, continents 
terrain features, spawns, resources, hazards, and underwater zones, dyma dynamic weather, biome, configurations, ecology, and an infinite number of other configurable features, all dynamically streamed to the client during gameplay. The possibilities are endless. So this sounds like a upgrade to basically everything about the ARC dev kit. So if you don't know, ARC actually has probably one of the biggest mod communities and most amount of mods and mod downloads out of pretty much any game in the world, probably only beaten by games like Fallout and Elder Scrolls. Legitimately, there are a ridiculous amount of mods. And the cool thing that they did with ARC, which sounds like they're doing more of with this, is every little statistic, every little balance, every little feature, you could change as much as you wanted. If you want someone to gain 9 HP instead of 10 for leveling, you could do that. If you want people to gain levels quicker, if you wanted tames quicker, um, everything. If you want animals to have more health when they're wild, if you want taming to be quicker, if you want tameable animals to get more stats once they're tamed, on how much percent they are tamed by, um, pretty much everything you could change. And in this game, it sounds amazing as well, and it was on unofficial custom servers. I'm wondering if people, I assume people are going to also have to buy those and keep paying for them to run as well. Um, but that is amazing because in ARC, a majority of my playtime was on heavily modified servers. Far, far more. Stay tuned for more details on the extensive features and content of Atlas. The brief sampling is just the tip of the iceberg. They'll be sure to watch out for those in the polar regions as they're extremely dangerous to ship, dangerous to ship holes. Okay, makes sense. Brief history of Atlas. Long ago, far above the watery world of Atlas. Okay, this is just lore. You guys can read this lore if you want. Just on the Steam page all the way at the bottom. I'm not going to read that right now. This video is going to be pretty long, but I'm honestly 100% going to buy this just to do content on it. Hopefully, it's going to be really good. Um, if you guys are much more hesitant on games like this, especially if you didn't play Ark, um... It's going to be an early access in five days. Tons of people are probably going to be streaming it. I'm going to be doing videos on it. You can definitely wait and see how it's going to play out, especially at the start, to see if you guys want to buy it more. Um, my opinion on early access games, some of them are really bad, but I usually don't mind them, especially since they're usually not full games. Ark was $25 when it came out, and it's $60 now. So I assume, since it's going to be in early access, it's probably going to be around that same price. Probably somewhere around there, so much cheaper than a full game. Um, it is kind of cool to be able to play the game before it's full release and have, you know, a bigger say in how the game moves forward. Which, in, if they do this game like they did Ark, literally player feedback could change the game in legitimately one day. It happened many, many times when they were upgrading the game or updating the game multiple times a day. But anyways, done talking. It's going to be a long video. Um, subscribe if you want to see more videos of any games, Fallout 76. I'll probably be covering this game more. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this. If you're going to be playing this game, I'm honestly a bit more excited than I was before, but still kind of apprehensive about this because of how Ark fared in its later years. But anyways, like the video if you like it, and thanks for watching.